Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, back to you with a new video for the Lithtech series on getting your computer set up and for starting to do development on the Lithtech Jupyter game engine. Today's video is about installing Visual Studio 2003. Now, yes, I know you can just install the SDK and use like Visual Studio 2020 to do pretty much everything that you need to do that would be in 2003. Um, but I'd rather use 2003 because it's the legit version that was originally used. It's a nostalgia thing. I know it sounds stupid. It it kind of is, but it's how I do things. So suck it. <laughs> so there's an issue installing f directly from these ISOs because the installer on disk one looks for files on disk on disk one that are actually on disk two, and when you run into that issue. The installer doesn't let you find that file. So like an open file prompt where you can select the file and actually have it install or select the directory where all the files that are missing are doesn't allow those options. What you end up having to do is um, actually making a folder basically and putting all the files there. But there's also an issue with these ISOs that if you extract them using WinRAR, it doesn't work and you'll actually see one of the errors that I'm dealing with from a previous recording session when it just didn't work uh, why I can't use WinRAR for extracting these ISOs you can try you can see if WinRAR will work but I'm pretty sure it won't for anybody because this is not the first computer I've had that issue on I've had it on three or four in the past when trying to install this for doing other stuff let's just get started with it so as you can see I have the full LithTech or the full Visual Studio uh, 2003 version 7.1, all the ISOs and all the updates from Microsoft here. The upload that is on Mega right now for this is missing these three files. So I'll try to get those uploaded um, as soon as I can. But these are from an old backup of mine from 2013. So we're going to try to get this going. And I'm going to show you guys how to set this up so you can install it with no errors. So first off, you're going to want to mount these three ISOs. So mount them. And from there, we're actually going to go back and we're going to make an install folder. Now I might try to also just straight upload this install folder or make a custom ISO for you guys and go from there because that might be a lot easier. But first off, you need to install the prerequisites. I already actually have that completed. So 1-prerequisites. I don't know how to spell, so just deal with it. Dealt with. And from here, you just simply copy all these files, put them in this folder, and run the setup. Come on. There it goes. So this is the problem I'm having from using WinRAR. It's just stuck on canceling this file transfer, and it's done this to me before on multiple versions of WinRAR and multiple computers. But since I already have the prereq stuff done, it's very easy to run this setup. You simply just run setup.exe. Oh, sorry. It'll auto start it. And you simply just Visual Studio.net prerequisites, click that, run through the setup real quick. It's not a big deal. It's just next, next, it installs. Done. So that's the prereqs. Now we want to do the actual installs. <coughs> Disk one and two. So from here, you need disk one first, which copy, paste. I don't know why I can't control V either. That makes no sense. And then you're also going to want disk two. So once that's done copying and pasting, I'll show you disk two and moving that over. Uh, and then we'll be good to go on actually installing Visual Studio. So it's kind of a pain in the ass, but it gets the job done and gives you the proper software needed for development on the List Tech Jupyter game engine because there's a lot of errors if you open it up in a newer version of uh, Visual Studio C++. 
everything in this game engine is C++, so you don't need to worry about J Sharp, Visual Basic, uh, C Sharp. You only need the C++ stuff. So once this is done transferring over, I'll start disk two and we'll go from there. But you want to wait until everything's done transferring just in case there's anything that gets overwritten from disk two. And trust me, I think there is at least one or two things that do. But now that's done, so disk two, copy, paste. And that'll transfer all the disk two stuff. So we can unmount disk one, unmount the prerequisites, and then this will actually finish up transferring all the files and we'll start the setup. So every video I do, I know I'm about six minutes into this one, but I like to give a shout out to LithFAQ and Lith.tech. Lith.tech actually has a link directly to our website on theirs. We're just a giant community that's trying to bring the passion back to LithTech. Recently, uh, Nexon did a huge update to Combat Arms Reloaded, where they completely redid all the rendering of the game, and you can actually get like HDR, the shadows look real. And it's not some little hacky way with like some direct X changes in an injected DLL like I used to do it. It's an actual complete change of the rendering of the Lithtech Jupiter game engine. So yeah, click yes on these, that's fine. But these two guys, awesome places, they're both going to be helping out and you know, we're all gonna grow basically this entire community together. So now that that's done, you can actually do the setup.exe and I'll show you guys getting the install started. <laughs> it's really simple at this point, but I'll show you the things you don't need to worry about. So if you want to save a little bit of disk space, I agree, product key's already there. Hit continue. We don't need J Sharp, which I've never even heard of. We don't need Visual Basic, we don't need that. We don't need samples. I'll leave that, and the rest of this I'll leave it. Not a big deal. Then just click install. And if I get the error that pops up on screen again, I'll uh, unpause the stopped recording and jump back in with you guys. If anything pops up that is needed to be given information about, I'll unpause the recording and let you guys know. So, see you guys in a sec. So this issue is one of the few you're going to run into. This is why I also kind of recommend setting up like a beastly Windows XP computer if you want to get super serious about doing any development on LithTech, especially with the programming. You can definitely fix the errors or update the code, but it's it takes inc an incredible long incredibly long time. On um, Radeon on the Discord. I believe did it and I don't know how long it took him and I know my friend Matt did it as well back in the day for caps and it took him like a month to fix every error that was in the code. Most of it is just finding a variable that's not set up correctly for newer versions of C++ and fixing that and basically putting like int i equals whatever but that's a pain in the ass to find. But this is one of the few you can actually ignore. Because if you see it basically there in its existence, which DRV, it's right here, all of these are here. So you don't have to worry about these. But since you don't have to worry about those, it's entirely fine to continue with the installer. And we're just gonna let it go, do what it does, <clears throat> and go from there. So I'll unpause it if anything else comes up and let you guys know. So as you can see here, the setup is done, but I just heard from Radeon on the Discord. He watched my previous video. Um, let me know this information. The source from LithTech Jupyter Enterprise can be compiled with Visual Studio 2019, the NALF 2 Build 69, Seal Hunter, Engine Source, etc. I've converted all of Combat Arms Reborn, his project for remaking Combat Arms, uh, the older version of it, uh, he used NALF2 and the actual engine source from the LithTech Jupyter Enterprise engine to Visual Studio 2019, but it requires a little bit of work. 
the T pose broken animation can be actually easily fixed by changing one console variable from false to true. Matt would hate himself right now because he searched for ever trying to fix that and then ultimately gave up. Um, <laughs> not saying he's a bad guy for giving up. I would have definitely given up too if it took me as long as it took him to try to find it. But it's really funny that it's just one variable, which, you know, that proves how drastic one variable can be. And then personally, he would avoid using Contract Jack for any major projects as I, I actually spoke a little bit incorrectly in the previous video. Uh, you can't get the engine source code and CA maps don't load in the full version of the game. Um, I have loaded maps on the multiplayer demo of Contract Jack, so I'm not sure why the full version wouldn't load the maps. So as these tutorials go on, I'll let you guys know with updates. I'll put a comment on that video in its description um, for everything that he just said. But now the install here is entirely complete and we're good to go. So if I wanted to actually open up anything, shut the front door, silly thing. We can actually eject that. So if I wanted to open up, for example, Seal Hunter, uh, samples. If I wanted to open Seal Hunter, simply right click the SLN, choose 2003, and it opens. That easy. That easy to actually get this up and running. So if I wanted to actually compile any of this, let's say the server app, um, let's change something in it. Uh, there's the splash. There's probably a timer code in here for how long it stays up. Set timer 2000. We'll make it 500 so it's a lot shorter. Yep, there we go. Set timer to destroy splash. And that's the nice thing here as well is that all the source code has comments through it. So it's it's really cool to actually dig through this stuff and figure out what's going on with it. So let's say I wanna build this. Oh, I got a bunch of errors. <laughs> oh, these are warnings. I probably have to point it properties, project dependencies. We're just going to select all of them. Um, probably need to add this. <coughs> so you go to this PC. Been a long time since I've done this, so bear with me a second. <clears throat> this is going to be engine, I believe. Is no. Let me just see here, real quick. Oh, okay. Contract Jack doesn't come with the binary source. It comes with game source documentation and the engine SDK but not the actual binary source code so that makes sense but it's also if it's that easy to change the pre uh, the T pose bug in NOLF 2 then there's no point in using the contract jack stuff so we'll cancel that actually remove that project dependency We'll just apply that and see if that works. That should work. So build. Please work. It looks like it's working. Because I didn't have all that before. One skipped, four succeeded. So if we go into Seal Hunter, you should see bin. There's the audio exe C. Server app. Win32 debug. 
I don't know where this stuff builds. I just realized. Where does this build to? Is that what was skipped? The one thing I wanted to build? Hold on. That might be the one thing that was skipped. <coughs> oh my god. Where does it build to? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Oh, Jesus Christ. Where in the world does this build to? And how do I find out? Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyway, I think you guys get the freaking point. Oh my god. So if I put this on release and build it, let's just build the whole solution. I got a vibrate from my phone. Uh. Contract Jack has 2D bilinear filtering on by default. This will make the game UE textures blurry, crappy looking. Sadly, it can't be fully disabled without the engine source. Don't use Contract Jack. It's gross and ugly. <sighs> so it looks like everything built. Ah, okay, I see where it builds. Builds to here. So here's your object LTO. If we go server app. It keeps skipping this. Why does it keep skipping that? That's the one thing I want. Oh my freaking god. Anyway. Um, so seashell will be in here. So seashell built. That's how easy it is to build the source code on this. I will figure out the crap later on actually getting the freaking server app to build because for some odd reason it keeps freaking skipping it. I'm going to keep seeing freaking, 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 freaking. <laughs> Output directory. Where is it? Whatever. Anyway, so everything builds. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god. Dying, I swear to god. Anyway, so that's how easy it is to get Visual Studio C, uh, C++ 2003 installed and how to compile the contract jack. Or not con oh my god. The LithTech source code for crap. Ugh. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'll make some edits on the first video in the comment section and the description and on the Lith Archive forum, and then we'll go from there. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace. Audi. Any? Audi? I know I didn't show you guys, by the way, the other uh, three ISOs. I don't actually think they're needed, so I'm not going to worry about it, but I'll still upload them just in case. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.